Who says you can't have a bomb wig on a budget? Honey, I used used braiding hair. This is recycling. Do you understand? We are saving the earth. We are recycling. We are making brand new bomb wigs from used braiding hair. Period. <laughs> What's good, beautiful people? It's your Goshen Tal here back again with another lit video. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome. And if you are returning, thank you so much for tuning back in. So, you guys, happy about today's title. And today, I am going to be showing you guys how I made this wig from used braiding hair. Now, in December 2019, I had these braids and I really love them. I love the color. But when I went back to repurchase the braiding hair, it wasn't there. So, I thought to myself, I might as well just turn the braids that I had into a wig. And here we are. So, without any further ado, let's get into the video. Please don't forget to like comment and subscribe to join the family and i'll see you guys in my next upload you want to start off with the dome cap and then i'm going to take my crochet needle that i also got from the beauty supply store and with the crochet needle i'm just gonna pull it through the dome cap to grab the hair that i folded in half then pull through the hair and then take both of the strands and pull them through the loop that we have already created if that was a bit too fast for you don't worry i will leave timestamps in the description box down below i will also repeat the step in case you didn't get that part i know a lot of people are about to ask me why i thought of this idea so in december when i had these braids right everyone kept on complimenting me oh my gosh until your braids are so nice i'm like thank you and then i decided that i would make a wig with the hair but then when i went to the beauty supply store to get the hair they said that they were out of stock and they didn't know when they were going to get stock so i immediately said that when i cut these braids i'm going to keep them so i can make this wig so here we are making a wig and i think it's pretty cool and by the way this is one of like the deleted folders that i managed to recover so i'm super grateful to show you guys that you do not need to buy expensive stuff just to have a cute wig I am making this wig into a closure wig so that's why I have my lace on that small part. I doubled this lace because it's on the thinner side and I don't really like that. So now I'm going to sew it down my lace and make sure that your lace is super super flat. Hence I used sewing pins just to ensure that it's flat. I could have easily made this into a frontal. It would have looked so much better. But do you guys want me to make the exact same wig into a frontal? Because I still have a little bit of braids left that I hope to make a different wig from that. If you have like more than 3 centimeters of lace remaining, make sure that you try and keep that. Because sometimes you might need the lace. You never know. So right now I'm putting the wig on my head and making sure that it's in the middle. So that I can mark my middle part using a white liner. This is um optional but because i didn't want to have like a free parting that would have been so much work that's why i did this as you guys can see i still have some hair left from the last time i did my braids so i'm just going to separate that i'm not really fluffing the ends because i don't see the purpose of fluffing the ends i don't know i could be wrong but i truly do not see the purpose so right now i'm just crocheting the outer edges of my lace because like i said the lace is on the thinner side and it can unravel on the ends and i just really do not like that so that's why i'm crocheting the outer ends just to make sure that everything is nice i am using the invisible parting method to make sure that my lace looks very very natural although the color is off anyways you want to section some hair not too much because we do not want to have big knots and then you're going to take your crochet and try to get as close as possible to the white line or whatever line you created you do not want to get on the line because that will just mess up your parting i'm going to poke my crochet through the lace and then grab the loop that i created by folding the hair in half and then grab only one strand and then just pull it through to make sure that everything is tight if you do not get that i will repeat it again once you have the hair folded over your finger you want to pull through the crochet needle and grab onto the loop that you have created and then only grab one strand and pull it through then make sure that it's tight by just pulling it through with your fingers continue the step throughout the entire lace you don't have to do it throughout the lace but i mean it's just easier and it will give you like a very natural effect because I do not make the wigs for anyone else, at this moment I'm already thinking about how natural it has to be. So I'm saving myself from plucking, I'm saving myself from all of that good stuff. Well, not so good stuff because plucking is actually a nightmare. But anyways, I am not bulking the hair. I'm not putting too much hair. I'm also taking into consideration that I do not really want to pluck. So when you're crocheting the hair, you want to make sure that you put as much as you want and you leave out as much as you want. I don't know if I'm making sense, but I hope I am. 
you guys will see in a second now what the invisible parting method does can you guys see like it looks like i've got multiple parts i can do that method over and over again throughout the entire lace but i just do not have that kind of energy okay so after we have crocheted down the um parting you want to make sure that the second row is as flawless as the first one because that will determine how your lace will look and how natural your lace will be If you are a beginner, I would suggest that you try and crochet your hair in rows, so basically in a straight line. This will give you an idea of like the next time you want to do your hair. You don't really have to do it that way, but I mean I still do I still use that way. It's much easier and it's less frustrating. You don't have to take your wig off and on just to make sure that you've got everything in order. So right now you guys can see that the band of the wig cap is not really crocheted, it doesn't really have enough hair. So I'm just going to go in and crochet some hair i'm not really fussy about this part because it's gonna cover up with the hair that's on top anyways i'm the type of person who fears bulky wigs with their entire life so you guys will see that i'm not putting too much hair around the closure which is not right because my closure ends up looking sparse which is a little bit weird okay but i'd rather have a, a sparse wig than a bumpy wig i don't know if i'm making sense but i really don't put too much hair i know this hair looks very voluminous but that's because it's curly from the twist that i had i will straighten the wig i also tried to like create natural curls in this wig which i did not show in this video but if you guys would like to see that video make sure that you tell me in the comment section down below because my mannequin head still has some hairs on it, I decided to put a stocking cap before I turn the wig upside down. So now I'm going to crochet on the stitching that's on the elastic band. Do not crochet on the elastic band. It will restrict your um, wig and it will also make your wig a little bit smaller. That's something that we do not want. So I'm crocheting. When I'm crocheting this area, I'm putting both of the shams through because there's no need to do an invisible parting. This is what the hair looks like after it was done. It looks a little bit crazy. But I went off camera and I played around with it a little bit. And then the final look is straightened. Okay. With this lace, I didn't really want to do too much. I didn't want to... Um, glue it down I didn't want to do anything so I cut away the dome cap that's on the lace and when I put it on my head I can still see the stocking cap it was bothering me I didn't cut this lace perfectly I didn't cut it to the way I would have liked it to be at but it's okay if I glue it down it will look very very realistic but I mean the color wouldn't look realistic but I mean okay 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 let's stop even thinking this so right now I'm using my foundation brush and some foundation just to cover up the lace and make sure that everything is really natural as you guys can see you can still see the stocking cap so I put some foundation on my um, stocking cap so that everything camouflages I put the stocking cap closer towards my hairline because I really really felt so irritated by that line of demarcation that you could see I mean there's ways to fix this I'm um, using the bold cap method but I wasn't really willing to go through that process and everything oh my gosh it's it's a dreadful process okay so you guys can see when I style my hair and when I pull the hair back you can't really see the dome cap although we've got like a little bold spot that I have to fix but you can't really see the bold cap so even when the wind blows people won't see that wig you guys know that wiggy look yeah I don't like it but other than that that's all I did to make this wig okay? 